everybody and welcome to TV8's annual football preview show. My name is Mike Martin and joining me is the coach Chris Wright. Chris, we have four coaches we're going to be interviewing tonight. Uh, we got a new guy and we got a Hall of Famer and a couple of regulars. Yes, of course the traditional coaches, Coach Tudis and Coach Pfeiffer from uh, North and South respectively and Coach Yedis from Sheboygan Falls and his strong program. He's the Hall of Famer and Al Holzheimer is just taking over for Sheboygan Lutheran. Should be an interesting show. Uh, one of the things we're going to do during the breaks, we're going to be showing the uh, home schedules for the different teams that we're covering tonight, North, South, uh, Sheboygan Lutheran, and Sheboygan Falls. And we're also going to show our schedule for the season. So make sure you're paying attention during those breaks. You can get some real good information. Uh, Chris, at the end of the show, we're also going to do our annual predictions. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think I got all mine right and you got all yours wrong. <laughs> I think maybe be the other way around. But uh, yeah, it's always fun to kind of pick a team out of the hat and see how they do. You never know. They're just kids, so it's just for fun, but uh, we'll see what we can do there. I don't want to get myself in trouble like I did a couple of years ago with another season that we cover. When We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, Chris is going to interview Al Holzheimer from Sheboygan Lutheran. Welcome back. Um, Coach, thanks a lot for coming in. I know you're, you're pretty busy this week with practice and first game this week. Um, since you're new to the uh, football community, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, I have a wife, Michelle, and three kids, and I'm the principal at Emmanuel Lutheran School in Sheboygan. Um, this is my second year helping out at Sheboygan Lutheran. I spent three years at Lakeland College as a defensive line coach out there. Uh, previous to that, I helped out at two other high schools, in the, one in the state and one in Illinois. So I know this was kind of late for you to get started. Um, job was kind of posted late and things, did that affect anything with transition or anything? Well, I think it ended up, that's why I, I got the job. Um, it was kind of too late to bring somebody in. Um, I was the offensive line coach last year and I worked with Coach Linsky. I also played football with him at Concordia, Wisconsin. And so when the opportunity came, came up that he left, they asked if I would take over and, and I was able to put it together a really good staff. I got, Two assistants from that played at Lakeland as our uh, as our two of our offensive coaches, and then uh, there's another teacher in the area that that's uh, our head JV coach, and then we had a person on staff. So I was able to put together a good staff, which made the decision pretty easy to go ahead and do this. Well, over the last few years, uh, Lutheran has basically been a power kind of running team and uh, been pretty successful at that. Uh, what are you going to bring to the uh, Crusader offense this fall? Well, we're hoping to run the ball still. Um, we're a little bit different formation. We're going four wides and three wides most of the time. Uh, the kids I brought from Lakeland are used to that type of offense. And, uh, and so we're spreading people out. We have a lot of quick skill kids. And we're looking to get the mismatch each week and, and uh, just capitalize on that. I, up front, we're, we're not as strong as a lot of everybody is in the conference. And, so to compensate for that, we have to do something a little different and take advantage of our, of our skill positions. Well, we've seen Lutheran play the last few years, and uh, uh, there has been a lot of fun, so it must be fun for the uh, kids as well. Kids are really excited. Um, the first scrimmage we had, we had, we had a scrimmage with the parents there, in the green and gold scrimmage, and, and the kids were really excited. The parents were real excited. We went to our, our scrimmage last week uh, with the three other teams, and... Uh, we had we, had, we scored the very first play of the scrimmage, so that really got people excited. A uh, 40-yard touchdown pass, the first play. So it's, there is a lot of excitement right now. And on the defensive side of the ball, your philosophy is? Defense, well, hopefully we just hold it one more time than, than the <laughs> offense can score. Um, we run around a 43 with a, uh, a monster back, and then I'd probably go a lot of cover two and cover four. Um, our philosophy is going to be just to attack people. Once again, our size is our disadvantage, and uh, we're just going to try and force the issue a lot. So we're going to come after people. Uh, has the transition been pretty good for, between the change of coaches with you and the players? Yes, I, I had a good report with the players last year, and uh, they were, from what I've you know heard, they were really excited about that. You know, we were taking over and we were bringing some some fresh philosophies into things, and uh, so it's it's going to be a good change. Good, glad to hear it. Uh, who are some of those uh, skill players you have? Can you name some of the, the young men that be, we might be reading about mm -hmm. this, this fall or seen? Uh, Josh Binsler, he, he was a all-area running back last year, second team, and uh, 
so he's going to be quarterback for us. Um, he's he's made the right reads for us. He was our backup quarterback. Um, Ryan Schmidt graduated last year, so we needed somebody that had some game experience playing the position. Uh, we also uh, he's he's a threat to run the ball, and uh, he's made the right reads. He's a very intelligent kid, uh, so he's making the the blitz pickups and, and those things in practice and, and carried over in scrimmage too. Um, TJ Radloff, he's been a sprinter um, running the hurdles in the track and field and he's he's uh, playing wide receiver for us and hopefully be a big play threat for us out there. Josh Korn played running back for us last year and he'll be our slot receiver and uh, Joe Renzelman will be another wide receiver so we'll have those three guys out all the time. Uh, Tony Holm who didn't play last year is coming back this year Right now has been looking really good so far in, in camp and uh, at one running back. And Tyler Coleman, who kicked for us and played soccer last year, is going to be our other tailback. So, so we feel really good about our, our skill kids there. You say you're a little undersized uh, on the line, but uh, mm -hmm. who are some of these young men on the line? Um, Eric Moldenhauer is our center. He, he's about 6'3", 250, and uh, he's, he's a senior. Uh, Mike Bynaman, he's about 175, but he's just a tough kid, uh, very tenacious, and uh, and uh, he's able to pull and get out there for us. Um, Matt Brendel played fullback for us last year. He's uh, moving to right tackle. Uh, Matt Resop is our left tackle. He's a junior, and uh, Kyle Bax will play our play the left guard. And he's a senior, and he's about 170. Our guards are pretty pretty small, but they get out there and they en they enjoy hitting people. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun with those guys. You got uh, some kids that can kick the ball for you. Tyler Bear kicker again. Uh, he, he kicked the ball really well for us last year, um, does a lot of directional kicking and is able to, so our coverages don't have to be perfect all the time. We can, we can kind of cheat a little bit with that. And so he's able to kick out of, out of bounds and, and along the hashes and also. Uh, being a smaller school, are the numbers still going up there? I know the last few years things have been gradually getting bigger. Is that still the case? Yes, uh, this year we had 40 kids out. Uh, that's in the four years they've had the program, that's the largest amount of kids they've had. So, and we're hoping to get two or three more freshmen when school starts. There always seems to be a couple of kids that don't haven't figured it out the, the whole football season thing, and so we'll welcome them to come in with open arms. And uh, I had to order more equipment this year. We we ran out of equipment, so it was a good good problem to have. It is a good problem. Well, Lutheran's really been moving up. You know, since they started football a few years, they've been moving up to CLC. Uh, high expectations this year. We'd like to think so. I mean, we have nine returning starters on both sides of the ball, and and we, we I think we learned a lot last year. We were a young team in the you know the first varsity season, and it was just a lot of new new things. Um, I, the reason we switched to a different offense was so we have a chance against some of the bigger schools in our conference, and you know that that's where we're hoping to be able to compete with them. Well, Coach, thanks so much for coming in. We look forward to seeing you. I know we won't see you till the end of the year, but, but good luck until then. When we come back, uh, Marty will be with Coach Yedis from Sheboygan Falls. Joining me is uh, Hall of Fame head coach at Sheboygan Falls, Dan Yedis. Dan, thanks for stopping in. Uh, talk a little bit about this Hall of Fame because it's it's really a big deal you know what it means to you and the community and you know the football team well Mike it certainly is a big honor uh, I, I view it as kind of an honor for all the people that have been in the program during the time that I've been there uh, one person doesn't do this you know I've been very lucky I've always said I've been very lucky to to coach some great players at Sheboygan Falls um, I've had uh, an outstanding group of assistant coaches that have just been uh, very true to me throughout my career uh, my family's been very supportive of the time I put in. Our school district and administrative staff has supported our program. So, you know, being in the Hall of Fame, I think, is a reflection on uh, all of those individuals. But mostly, I think, it's the players that I've had a chance to coach. Uh, I wouldn't be here without them. Now, you've got 23 years. This, you're starting your 23rd year as a head football coach. You've been at uh, Sheboygan Falls 29 years. You know, that's quite a run. And I'm uh, going to nail you down on one maybe two, if you had to pick your best back in your career as a head coach, can you nail it down to one, maybe two? My best running back? Yeah. Oh boy, that would really be tough. I've had so many you know, good running backs and some, uh, some two great backs on our state championship team and Nick Martin and Matt Kimler, and you know, they rushed for over 400 yards in that state championship game, <laughs> but 
going back into the 80s and early 90s, I've just had some great, great running backs. Uh, so it's really hard to just single out one person. I've been lucky uh, to have a lot of you know, good, solid running backs. Very diplomatic. Let's go to the line, because uh, I know you've had some outstanding linemen over the course of your career. Uh, anybody that uh, stands out as being the best or a couple that stand out as being the best? Well, in terms of college potential, you know, we had Tyler Adam who received the scholarship and played with the, with the Badgers. Uh, he played in our uh, 87 and 88 team that were very outstanding teams. And then uh, in the 90s, we had Kevin Campman. He was offered a couple of full ride scholarships and decided he just wanted to walk on to the Badgers. So in terms of college recruiting, those two guys stand out. But then I've just had those a lot of those 205 pound guards, uh, the Majerus Walsh group, and I, you know, I could list so many names that were just such phenomenal high school players, maybe didn't have the size to go mm -hmm. on and play you know, Division I football, but as a, in terms of a high school football player, they were great. One of the things that I've noticed in covering your team over the years, Dan, is uh, pound for pound, your kids are really tough, you know, and, and they just hit so doggone hard. Now, how do you teach those kids that? Well, I've always said, and I don't want it to change, I've always said I've been lucky that Sheboygan Falls kids are tough kids, and, uh, you know, I, we, we don't want that to change. Uh, I think a little bit of it you can teach in drills, but I think some of it's just in their heart, and like I say, I'm just lucky to coach those kids. Now, last year was an atypical year, and uh, there were some unfortunate situations that went on with injuries in particular. Uh, first of all, how are the injured kids doing? Are they going to be coming back? Okay, I know your son was one of them when he graduated, but uh, you know it just it wasn't the kind of year that you certainly expected. Well, um, we started out, uh, you know, having three real key injuries by the time we got out of the first game. Um, Andy Wolf, one of our lead receivers, coming in broke his foot at a camp in the summer and missed about five games, and then uh, Dieter went down with a shoulder separation in the Lux Casco game early in the game, and then Pat Seifert had a, a season-ending injury in that game. Also, he tore his ACL. So. Uh, you know, good news is Andy's playing baseball and basketball. Dieter's got a week and a half in of college football at Oshkosh. Pat's back. He's a junior. He's trying to work himself back in shape. And, and I don't think he's anywhere close to where he was last year, but uh, it'll take a little time, and hopefully we can get him there. When Dieter moved in as the quarterback, uh, and I don't recall if it was his sophomore or freshman year, you know, but anyway, once he moved in as a full-time quarterback, you, you changed the offense a little bit. It seemed like... If you threw three or four times a game, that was pretty much. Uh, yet when Dieter stepped in as your quarterback, you opened it up a little bit more. Now he's gone. Who's going to step in at quarterback, and uh, what's the offensive philosophy going to be? Well, we've actually you know, changed our philosophy again. Uh, we really try to build an offense to the talent we have. And you know, one of the things people probably say, well, your son's at quarterback, you're going to throw it more. But we were blessed. Uh, his junior year to have a kid like Ryan Walsh, a player of the year in our conference, who was a phenomenal wide receiver, and then Andy Wolf on the other side. We trimmed that back a little bit last year when Andy got hurt. Once he came back, we opened it up again. But um, we have some very, very big offensive linemen this year. We have three juniors in our offensive line right now between 270 and 290 pounds. And uh, we've always been a wing tee, a quick hitting team. So we're kind of changing our philosophy to match uh, the ability of the players we have. So we're going through some growing pains right now. When you uh, run your wing T offense, you run an off, uh, 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 unbalanced line, or do you keep the two and two on each we'll, side? We'll do a little unbalanced, but that's not our base set. Um, you know, we're, we're usually not an unbalanced line team. Now, we talked about a little earlier about all your kids really love to hit, and of course, uh, when you're a hitting team, usually that translates into pretty good defense. And I think that as you look at your teams over the course of your uh, tenure at Falls, defense has really been a strong point. How does the defense look for you this year? I, I think you're right. I think that's the thing that we try to hang our hat on. Um, you know, we've got a lot of young kids out there this year. You know, we lost a, a good senior class last year, and we've got a couple of kids coming back. Uh, Eric Miner, the defensive tackle, started for us last year. Josh Mersberger started an inside linebacker. Seth Mower started at a halfback last year, and Dylan Stresner saw a little playing time before an injury. So we've got about four kids out there with some experience, but we're, uh, uh, we're kind of up in the air right now as to who our defensive starters are going to be. We've got a lot of really close races going on for a lot of positions. So that would be a good thing, because they're battling for positions. I think it's always good to have good competition, that's right. And hopefully you know, the guy that finally gets the job is a good athlete. One of the things that uh, stands out is you've got a really great program going, and uh, uh, one of the things that hinges on that is your stability in the coaching staff. Talk a little bit about those guys. Yeah, I, I really have been lucky. Um, 
You know, just this last year, uh, Chuck Bronick, after 20 years with me, has retired from football. His son, he, Chuck lives in the Port Washington School District, and his son is a junior on the varsity down there, and rightfully so wants to watch his son play on Friday night, so I understand that. So he's gonna be out of our program for two years, and whether or not we'll get him back three years down the road, we'll see how much he enjoys it. But I had, uh, I had uh, Chuck for 20 years, uh, this is the 20th year for Keith Minversi, our offensive and defensive line coach. And then Greg Prebeck, one of our JV coaches, I kind of call him the general manager of our team. He's, he's doing all that behind the scenes stuff. He's been with me uh, every year I've been at fall. So I've been oh, lucky boy. to have those people for a long time. You know what that tells me is that you must be a pretty nice guy. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's the case or not. Let's talk a little bit about the conference because time is running short. Uh, Plymouth won it last year. Uh, I know that on the show last year we picked you as winning it. Of course, injuries uh, really hampered that, that effort. But uh, how do you see things playing out uh, this season? Well, like we always tell the kids, you know, things, the game isn't played on paper. Um, I, I think probably unanimously in our conference, you know, people will probably pick Plymouth. I think this is a year that they've been waiting for. They've got just a phenomenal group of senior athletes that have kind of gone through the freshman and JV level undefeated and then helped them win a championship last year. And while they lost some seniors, they were a very junior orientated team. So they, you know, they'll probably get everybody, uh, the coaches nod. And then I think you really have a pack of teams kind of in that next echelon. You know, I'm sure uh, Campbellsport has a lot of uh, people returning. Uh, Kewaskum, I think, will have a very good team. I think New Holstein's program is really taking off. And I'd like to think we could be in that next pack of teams also. And uh, I'm not, you know, sure about some of the other teams, you know, in terms of their numbers and where they're at right now. I haven't seen any videotapes on them. One of the things you got to do over in Sheboygan Falls is get them to pipe in the TV8 so they can see that uh, rebroadcast of the Plymouth Falls game. Coach Dan, thanks a lot for stopping in. It's your great interview and uh, really appreciate it. We're looking forward to, to doing that game, uh, Plymouth at Falls. And when we come back, Chris is going to interview Dean Tudis, so stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, Coach Tudis, thanks for coming in. Let's get right to it. Last year, uh, the running game really took off, especially the second half of the year uh, with Santos Medina. You should love the potential. Um, the number one, well, two emphasis and that we went into camp with, number one was to play better defense, and the other one is to run the ball. Um, actually, we're, we're tired of being referred to as a finesse running team. so. The, our running game this year, it actually started in the, the weight room. I've had the guys thinking every rep they've, they're taking that we're running the ball. And all summer, all last spring, you know, I'd go up to kids and ask them what they're thinking, and they'd say run the ball. And yeah, um, the running game started to gel, and basically it was against uh, Manitowoc, then Preble. And we knew that was going to happen because we had three sophomores starting and then you know Andy Irick at left tackle that had never started in a varsity game and you know the offensive line takes some time to gel and you know in, in the beginning we took some you know the South game and the, the Notre Dame game there were flashes of it but just not consistent so one of the things that we've focused on is you know in the in the weight room getting our guys stronger and you know transferring that to the field and we're hoping it takes off. When we lost Sean McGee with the ACL, you know, we had to throw another sophomore in, Peter Reschke, and he got the chance to start the last four games. I didn't think losing Sean would be that significant, and, you know, hindsight 2020, it really was. One of the problems we had in all those last games is when it came to crunch time, we just we couldn't convert on a third and short or whatever. And that's, we need to be consistent and develop more continuity in the running game. So that's, it's very important. And tonight in the West Bend West game, that's going to be significant. Um, Brian Herman's a pretty special player, and, well, he's a special kid, too. Uh, after, you know, two years with you, you've got to be lucky to have him back. Yeah, I, I think any coach that had, you know, a Brian Herman on his team would be lucky. And I think one of the good things that stems from last year and even his sophomore year is more guys in our program have kind of seen him take the lead, and they've taken the lead to follow his work ethic and, and how he is on the field and off the field. And, you know, that's what good leaders do. He's not a, he's not a rah-rah guy, and you know that, Chris, yeah. but he 
he just works hard and he lets his play on the field do his talking. The thing though, when he does speak, you know, it's like the old EF Hutton commercials. Yeah. When, you know, when Brian talks, people listen. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. The only thing that concerns me is his ankle. You know, it's still not, I don't think it's 100%. He tells me it is, and we'll find it. I've seen flashes of it, especially in the scrimmage. He went up and caught a ball that, you know, only he can do. So we'll see tonight. He's going to, he'll run the ball, catch the ball. I'm even toying with the possibility of having him throwing the ball once in a while. Yeah, I like the way that you move him around. You move him to the <coughs> slot, you move him out wide. You know, sometimes you got him carrying the ball. I like the way you use him as much as possible. Get, get the, the good players the ball, and that's what a good coach does. Well, one of the things, when we first had him at X, which he's on the line of scrimmage, we had three guys loading him up. So I, early last year after the second game, we decided to move him to Z so we can move him around. I mean, we even had him in the backfield and direct snap to him and stuff. But yeah, we've got to try to find you know, different ways to get him the ball. And I think what's going to happen now with the way that Santos tie, and even Nate Pitch, Nate Pitch has really looked good. And Peter Priggy's, Peter Priggy has really surprised me at tight end with his ability to block because he's not real big and his ability to find open spots in the zone and, and run away from guys that are in man coverage, that it'll take some of the pressure off Brian and make him even more dangerous because they're not going to be able to overload. They're not going to be able to take two and three defenders to cover him. And at the end of the year, you know, they're doing the same thing to Nate. So, you know, they had linebackers, squatted corner and safeties over top. They're not going to be able to do that. They're going to have to keep their safeties in the run game. And that's going to make, you know, our receivers especially Brian, more dangerous. They're not going to be able to double-team him. And I wouldn't want to be a defensive guy. And that, that it all stems on a running game, though. Yeah. Um, I know some teams take uh, special teams kind of for granted, but uh, I know your brother Todd coaches special teams, and I think it's, it really makes your team, and there's great pride in your special teams at North. Yeah, in fact, you know, yesterday my brother came up to me and he goes, you know, we have Gooch, Todd Gutshaw, on every special team. He's one of our starters. And right now, he doesn't come off the field. And we had to make, you know, we got to get him off the field, so we made a couple of substitutions. But yeah, um, you know, special teams, to me, they are special. We call them special forces. So we give them little military monikers for each one. Um, you know, that's a, you know, going back to Brian, people are saying you need to get him off the field. You need to get other, but Brian, you know, he, he loves special teams. He, he's mad because I don't have him on kickoff. But, I, you know, we got to give them a break. Um, and one of the things we do, we, we coach up and teach our special teams just like we do offense and defense. We do individual, and then we do a group, and then we do a team, period. So it is, we take a significant time out of our practice, more so than a lot of other people. And, you know, it'll show up. It'll be there tonight because we've tweaked some schemes. We had to, you know, with Brian, we've had to, We've had to tweak our punt return and, and other things because they started directional kicking away. So now this year, like our punt return, we're going to have two people back that are a threat. So they're going to have a hard time kicking away, thinking that you know they're just going to let the ball roll around and, and get it down. So yeah, they are special, and you know that's one facet of tonight's game that is going to be uh, you know crucial that we win that ball game. Uh, <clears throat> we're running out of time here, but one last thing I want to ask you, Coach. You've been around now for a little bit. Uh, time to uh, kind of put in your things. Uh, how do you keep kids enthusiastic with Raider ball? Um, one of the things we try to do, uh, our guys know that when it's time to work, we're going to work. And, you know, there's times in practice where we'll just shut it down and, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll tell some jokes. We, we try to do little things like play softball. Uh, the other thing, our, our guys get involved with our camps so that they can see how coaches work and, and how, how they can give back. Uh, they fundraise, they do community service, and you know, just hopefully they take a lot of pride in what we do, and not just on the field, but off the field. And I want them to be gentlemen and have class pride and discipline. And then, and then when they get on the field, you know, get after it, but still maintain the class pride and discipline you know, that we ask for. Well, thanks for mu so much for coming in, and good luck this season. We're looking thanks. forward to seeing you on September 10th, or excuse me, next week, Friday. Uh, when we return, Marty will be with uh, Sheboygan South coach uh, Dave Pfeiffer.
Joining me is Dave Pfeiffer, entering his ninth year as a head football coach at Sheboygan South. And uh, little changes here, Dave, here on that side. You're supposed to be asking me the questions. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you had a really great year last year, and, and you have a strong core of skill players coming back that should really help your team offensively this year. Why don't you go through some of those kids and uh, what you expect from them in terms of positions played and okay. those type well, of issues. Well, first we've got Tim Stubbe. It's three-year starter quarterback. He was first team all-conference. I believe he led the conference in total offense last year. He'll be back for his third year as at the helm. That's obviously a plus. Um, running back, we have Eric Donovan back at tailback. He led the conference in rushing and scoring, and he was back of the year. He's 20 pounds bigger and faster. I heard he's uh, uh, just like a Greek god. He's no. got a nice physique on him. Um, my son is back at tight end. He was second team all conference, averaged about 18 yards a carry and probably or a catch, excuse me, and probably more important than that, blocks like an offensive tackle. Uh, we have three receivers back: uh, Andy Shane, Travis Wilson, and Danny Teller, and they're all very, very athletic. And then at the fullback position, um, Will Hartman's going to play some of that from. The defensive side of the ball, and Will's obviously an impact player on our defense, but it really uh, will help our offense, as well as Jacob Billman, who played there last year. Now, last year you had a really great line, and I thought, you know, I mean, you had some great skill players, don't get me wrong, but I thought they really got your offense in mm -hmm. gear, and you really had an impact player in, uh, in Jones, Ricky Jones, but you lost four of those guys. How's the offensive line stacking up this year? Well, first, I really like our tackles. Uh, Trevor Klobuchek is back at what we call our four tackle. He makes all the line calls. He's uh, a more experienced, a more mature player, and he's really leading on the field. And he's a big kid. He's six foot five and 260. The other tackle I really like as well, and that's John Lindsay. He's 6'3", 270, and he's a junior. Those two kids, I think, are going to be as good as anybody in the conference. Uh, inside, we're going to be a little bit inexperienced, uh, although not small. Justin Lammers is playing our two guard. He's 6'1", 290. And right now the three guard is a sophomore, which concerns me a little bit. But uh, Tyler Courtright has done a nice job maturing. He's six foot and he's 250 pounds. Uh, we have a couple other guys who are going to back them up. Um, and at center we have Dan Milans, who's he's a smaller of the guys, but at our center position that's really not bad because we really like to get him to the backside. Um, just a point about last year's line: you don't replace a guy like Rick. You don't replace full ride guys. Uh, but I really think this group is as big as our offensive line last year, and I really think they're, they'll mature and be in a pretty good group. I want to talk a little bit about philosophy in, in your line play because uh, you, don't, you don't have a right tackle and a left tackle. You move them back and forth, Correct. side to side. Talk a little bit about the philosophy behind that. Well, really, and, I got... Oh, and before you get into that, is that leading the defense to where the play is being run? Well, it, it can if you continually run to one side, your tight end side all the time. Um, but what, where I got that from is previous to coming to Sheboygan, I was a defensive coordinator at New Berlin West. And, and what I found is by flopping the line, yes, you have to teach the kids to go right and left with their movements, but it reduces the amount they have to know by half. So in essence, we can run the same play to the right, flip the run, line, run the exact same play to the left. So the kids have to uh, learn half as much. I, I like that. I try to keep things simple in that regard. It's probably more difficult for our backs to learn it uh, initially than it is our linemen, but it keeps things pretty simple, and, and the more simple we can keep it in the line, the better, so they can be more aggressive. One of the things that was really a highlight of your team last year was the explosiveness. You had that 80-yard touchdown run against Oshkosh in the playoffs, and Stubbe broke numerous long gains on option plays. Uh, it looks like with those players back, you should be a big play offense. Well, I hope so. I mean, we, we've got enough team speed where if somebody misses a tackle, we got a chance to make a, a six-yard gain into you know, touchdown from any distance. Um, again, part of that is I'd like to see us become a consistent team and not drop the ball on the floor, not throw interceptions, and kind of beat teams up. And if we wear them down, then we're going to break long plays. But yeah, we've got some athletes. There's no question about that. Now, even though your team was extremely strong offensively, I still think uh, probably the signature of your ball club last year was its defense. Uh, they were very, very good. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that, maybe starting with the line. Well, first and foremost, they led the conference in literally every statistic, and we have eight starters back. Uh, in the defensive line is Gavin Majorly. He played defensive end, and he'll play there as well this year. Uh, my son, will, Jacob, will play defensive end as well as once in a while. We'll bump him inside, kind of make it a little unpredictable where he's going to be. The nose tackle uh, right now is Peter Bettner. Um, 
six foot kid, 210 pound kid, very strong, very, very aggressive. And the other uh, tackle right now is Kyle Berlin. Kyle's a little undersized, but a great technician, very strong, stays down, doesn't get knocked off the line. Um, we have a couple other guys, John Valdez, Mike Brookins, uh, who are also battling and filling in some spots in that regard. Linebackers uh, were a highlight of your team last year, and it seems like it's been that way for the last five or six years. And of course, the guy that Chris and I always had a good time with was Will the Man Hartman. I imagine he'll be playing some linebacker. Will, will will play what we call our Sam linebacker, the strong side. Um, first team all conference, all region, great player, very played really well in the scrimmage. Uh, next him will be David George. Those two are returning. Uh, will's 195 pounds, 5'11". Dave's 6'3", 210. They both run four sevens or better. Uh, the two outside linebackers right now, one will be Trent Brook for sure. Trent's more of a kind of a Oh, a customized position, half D-back, half outside linebacker, does a great job against pass. Um, the other side is between Steve Chang, uh, is playing what we call our Apache, up on the strong side a little bit, uh, although uh, Ben Hendricks will play some inside linebacker and he might also play some of that outside. That's a really good group of kids, good players. We talk about the D-backs a little bit. Well, Ben Miller's back. He was second team all-conference, led the conference interceptions. He's going to move to free safety. Uh, Matt Fister's back at corner, and the other corner position right now is Adam Math as well as Jamal Johnson. Those two guys are kind of worn out for that position. I want to talk about something, Dave, that we haven't talked about uh, over the last couple of years. You, you may have thrown it in, I don't remember, but uh, one of the things I think really helps your program is you've got pretty good consistency with your coaching staff. Why don't you talk a little bit about well, those guys? Our continuity's been very good the last couple of years. First, uh, on the offensive side of the ball, Carl Beckham's been with me eight of the nine years. He does a very good job. Uh, he's really invested a lot of time becoming a really good quarterback coach. Jimmy Renzelman coaches our receivers. Um, I believe every year since I've been here, we've, been an all, we've had an all-conference receiver. That says a lot about Jim. I coach the offensive line, and this year we have Chris Korf, who played at Whitewater. He's a Sheboygan Falls uh, alumni. He's coaching our running backs. He'll really tame the Stallions back there, and we've got a chance to be pretty good with that staff. Uh, defensively, Chris Hine leads our defense. He does an unbelievable job. I believe that's been the biggest reason our, our program's twisted the, the other direction, winning far more games. Uh, Jamie Berlin coaches a defensive line. He's been there all nine years with me. And then Mike Rank coaches the D-backs. We've had good continuity. We have two things that I would like to discuss yet. We don't have a whole lot of time, but uh, eligibility is always a concern. And I, I, I think it was the North-South game last year. You held your guys after the game for like a sleepover in the gym and uh, you know, I thought that was really a good move on your part and you know, keep the kids from getting out of trouble. What other kinds of concerns or issues do you have to deal with eligibility wise to keep the kids playing? Well, gr grades are always an issue and uh, sadly that's one of the things I'm not real happy about is we have probably five kids, five kids that are academically ineligible the first three games. That's 100% against what I believe in. Um, I'm disappointed by that, it hurts the team. We have a couple kids that would definitely contribute we're gonna to have to, you know, make ends meet without them. Uh, that that I disappointed in. We check that literally all year round. Um, sometimes you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And I'm afraid that's what's happened academically. Last last question: How do you see the conference uh, playing out this year? Uh, I mean, you guys got to be right in the mix. Well, I th I think we have a chance to be a good football team. Um, if our offensive line matures, I th I think we could be really pretty good. Uh, I think the conference from top to bottom is going to be much better than it was last year. Uh, Manitowoc's got a, a great tradition, huge kids. North has got an incredible amount of athletes coming back on, on uh, offense. Uh, Preble is not going to be the way they were last year. They had almost, I think, 20 starters back. Uh, East, no one's given them any credit, but John Colstead wouldn't be sticking around unless he had a great group back, and I've heard he does. And Notre Dame is Notre Dame. They're going to come at you with a bunch of great kids from their JV program. And, John will probably get a couple extra kids from the Green Bay area to fill in some blanks. <laughs> Sounds like you got your work cut out for you this year. It's going to be a real good league this year. It really is. Dave, thanks a lot for stopping in. I really appreciate your great interview. You. When we come back, Chris and I will wrap up this evening's program. So stay tuned. Well, Chris, we're just about done. We've got to wrap it up. Uh, first of all, we want to thank the coaches for stopping in. All the interviews really went good. Uh, Chris, as we look at our schedule this year, we have some key games, and uh, let's talk about uh, a couple of the games our fans should look for you know, as the season progresses as key games for the area. 
Well, this year, for the first time in a number of years, the uh, North-South game is going to be right at the beginning. I believe it's September 10th, and uh, that'll be a huge game. And then the following week is Revenge Week. <laughs> Sheboygan South and Green Bay Notre Dame's coming to Sheboygan this year. Last year, that was kind of the pivotal game. Uh, Sheboygan South, with a couple breaks, probably could have won that game. So that I was think, a game the city wouldn't let us go up and cover. <laughs> right. I think that's, uh, that's uh, two key games, especially for Sheboygan South, to get off to a good start. Uh, later on in the season this year, we're going to do Falls and Plymouth, which we've been begging to do for years. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest games maybe in the state for rivalries and things. And then, of course, Kohler and Lutheran uh, will be towards the end of the year as well. Now, we need to get into the key part of the whole broadcast. Those interviews were nothing compared to what we're going to talk about now, and that's the predictions from the two gurus. <laughs> First of all, let's talk about the Central Lakeshore and uh, what do you see going on in that conference? We don't cover them very much and we're not very familiar with them but I know uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and maybe take Random Lake. Random Lake's always been a very strong team over the number of years. They have a nice coaching staff. Um, so I'm gonna take Random Lake. I know Coach Holzheimer said something about Cedar Grove this year so uh, let's watch them. Well bit. last year it was uh, Ozaki won the championship. Uh, Coach Coach Al mentioned that he felt it was gonna be Cedar Grove so I'll go with Cedar Grove. So you have who? I'm going with uh, Random Lake. Okay and I've got Cedar Grove. Let's move on to the Eastern Wisconsin, and uh, there we've got the big game coming up. It'll be on TV8, Plymouth at Sheboygan Falls. Plymouth won the conference last year. How do you see it panning out this year? Well, as every year, I take the Purple Birds and uh, Coach Yedis. I know he's got a, this is one of the best groups that he's been looking forward to for years to become seniors. And so I'm gonna go with uh, Falls, and uh, they just have an amazing program out there, the way they, Every year they recycle players. It doesn't matter if they got big players or small players. They always seem to compete, and uh, and uh, I'm taking them again. Well, so I don't get mugged out in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm going with you. We both have Sheboygan Falls on that one. And the Fox River Valley and uh, South has a legitimate chance of winning conference this year. They were right in the mix last year, but there's always Notre Dame. Right. I think uh, Coach Pfeiffer made some very good points. Green Bay Preble wasn't a great football team last year, but they were uh, bringing back about 20 players this year. And sometimes you say, well, they're bringing back 20 players, but just because they're 20 players doesn't mean they're always good. But I think there's somebody you should probably watch out for. Uh, Green Bay Notre Dame, until they get uh, knocked off, they got to be the team to pick. Uh, Sheboygan Fall, uh, South, excuse me, is definitely their offensive line is the key. Uh, but I know us on the sidelines last year, their backups were some big, big kids. And what about well, Manitowoc? Yeah, I, they, I'm not a big, I'm not, you know, Manitowoc's probably got a nice, nice I think they team. have a new coach this year, you know, the third coach in probably the last five or six years, so. Right. I'm going to, you know, South could do it. I think those first two games are just huge for them. They got Eric Donoville and the way they play defense, Coach Hines got those guys going. Uh, they are not, they are not going to be overlooked this year. They're going to be a decent team to compete with. And, Hopefully Sheboygan North, with their good skilled players back, they got a, a boatload of skilled players. Uh, well, maybe they can, they can sneak in there. <laughs> I'm going to go with Notre Dame, but I'm, I'm going to hope that South can maybe knock them off. I hear you. I'm going with Sheboygan South. Now, our first game is going to be Port Washington at Sheboygan North. That game will be September 3rd. That should be a good one. It's a non-conference game. We'll get a good, we should be able to get a good feel for what uh, North will bring to the table this year. And uh, Chris, any closing statements before we uh, sign off? No, the weather outside today as we're doing it is kind of chilly and cold, so it's time for football. It's hard to believe it's the end of August already, but I'm ready and I'm excited. Well, Chris and I got to get going because we got some sleep to get tonight. We got to play tennis tomorrow morning. And uh, for Chris Wright and the crew, Scott Miloff, our director, Steve Reinert, and Isato Hemi, the two uh, camera person, my name is Mike Martin saying so long, everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you down the road.